Some people, when they're working with HTML and CSS, have difficulty understanding this whole issue of rules of precedence that, that control how the cascade works in this whole issue of cascading style sheets. Well, what we mean by the cascading style sheets, if you think of cascading like a waterfall uh, coming, uh, water falling from the top of a cliff and falling over the edge, uh, you sort of get that idea of cascading uh, things that sort of fall down from one level to the next. And that I think that's why the term cascading is used. But there are rules that apply to how these different levels of precedence uh, can be applied to styles in your style sheets. Now I know if you're new to web design this is complicated so let me see if I can explain it uh, like this. The first level in this rule of precedence is simply the unchanged browser default settings and these are maybe otherwise known as the user agent default settings for each element. Now you know what element is, you should if you're looking at this video. The element is something like an H1 tag that is used to maybe make some content in your page large and bold and uh, very uh, noticeable on a page. Or maybe you have something like the P or paragraph element that is used to format a paragraph and uh, give it certain um, uh, definitions or styles that tell it something about these uh, space the the amount of uh, uh, spacing between each line and uh, and so on so what we mean by user agent is basically your browser there's a great website you can go to click it here it's called uh, useragentstring.com useragentstring dot com all one word here and it it'll tell you what your browser is and in this case I'm using uh, the Mozilla uh, 5.0 it gives you all the specifications down here it's a brand uh, of Mozilla I'm using version Firefox 6.0.2 and it tells me uh, I'm running Windows 7 it gives me all of this information my rendering agent here for my browser is Gecko and so this tells me uh, all of these kinds of technical details about what my browser is so I'll go back to my browser here and so in my Gecko Firefox 6.0.2 browser there are certain default settings for things like that H1 uh, element or the paragraph element and so on and I want to illustrate that by going to this is a file we're going to work with in just a moment this has a couple of H1 tags and an H2 tag if I go ahead and run this in my browser then here is what we're going to be looking at and uh, there's a great little add-on that you can get for Firefox called Firebug. So I'm going to click on Firebug here and let it run. And uh, I'm going to click on the Inspect Element button here. And I'm going to come up and let this sort of hover. I'll just take this middle one here. I'm going to click on it, left click hold, and then come down to this area here and click here. And I'm going to come over and click on Computed. Now, in order for that one little line, that H1 element there that says, Hello, Texas, then you see that line of code right here. And look at all of the things that are being defined by the browser. I have not yet defined any special rules for this H1 element. So here is the font family. Uh, it, it is a sans serif font. It's a font size of 26 pixels, a font weight of 700, like 700% 700 over normal, uh, font style of normal, uh, font size adjust, none color is all black, uh, all zeros is all black, no color at all. Uh, text transform is none, text decoration is none, letter spacing, word spacing, line height, text aligned, vertical aligned, direction, and scroll on down look at all of these uh, default settings just to display that one H1 element I've got background color background image background repeat background position and all of these things are already set the box model is a box model uh, width of 974 uh, pixels because it's taking up the entire width of this screen 
uh, top auto, right auto, bottom auto, left auto. My goodness, look at all of these attributes and values. These are this is an attribute, and these are values. These are all predefined by my browser. Now those are predefined. I don't, I don't have anything to do with uh, setting those. They come with the Gecko rendering agent that's part of my Firefox browser. It's all predefined. So the first rule of precedence is we're going to see whatever our browser wants us to see. That's what this first line means. You're going to see what your browser wants you to see. Now there's another level of precedence which means that I can change these default browser settings by using an external style sheet. If I use an external style sheet, I can change the settings that we saw there for my default browser settings. But if I also use an embedded style, uh, a block of embedded style rules in my HTML code, they can override anything that I have in the external style sheet. And if I go one more level down and use an inline style, then I can override anything that comes up in my embedded styles, which will overcome anything that's in my external styles, which will overcome anything that's in my default browser settings. So this is the order of precedence. And when you see these things, this is what it means that you have a greater amount of control at the point of the element itself or the place of the element itself in your code with an inline style and your inline style rules can overcome anything that you define in your embedded styles and those can overcome anything that you have in an external style. Let me show you how this works just real quickly here. We're going to come into this uh, code. We have an H1 for hello world and I'm just going to put a style rule style and I want to make it equals color colon red. So I want a oops, I have to make that a semicolon and a quotation mark. So now in this H1 element, the color of this font will be red, but not the color of the font here on line 10, where it's also an H1 rule, because I've only defined a special rule for this one particular H1 element. I'm going to make it red. So let's save the file and run it. Launch in Firefox. There we go. We've made that first one red, but it didn't touch the second one. The reason it didn't touch the second one, because I did not set an inline rule and there's no other rule in the embedded area and there's no rule in an external style sheet. So the rules of the browser take over. Now if I come up here and embed a uh, is create a set of embedded style rules. Style equals um, type, I should say, style type equals text forward slash CSS and put a closing tag here for the style element and I'm going to create an H1 selector and put in my open curly bracket, put in my closing curly bracket and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to say color green. Now the browser, I'm going to save that. Now the browser and the rules of precedence are going to say that this H1 element here is still going to stay red because I have an inline style for this one particular H1 element. But now this, this element here on line 15 the H1 element here and its content are going to become green because this element here is going to override this element uh, here. Let's run this. We should see a red and a green. And that's exactly what we see. Now I'm going to, I have already created a style sheet here, styles.css. And I've used also the selector of H1 and color is blue. So I'm going to go back here again. And this HTML file right now does not know that that style sheet exists. It's because I have to create a link element that will link 
this HTML page to that style sheet. So I'm going to go link and I'm going to put that the relationship of that page that we're going to link to is a style sheet and that it's found at styles.css and that it is a type equals text forward slash CSS. So now I have created a link to that style sheet called styles.css and that styles.css says that any h1 element will be colored blue but is it going to be blue because remember that as we saw in our first page the rules of precedence are that <clears throat> the external style sheet does not have as high a level of precedence as an embedded style sheet. Whatever you put in the embedded style sheet will override anything in the external style sheet. So let's see what happens here. Even though the external style sheet says blue, the embedded style sheet says green and that will affect this one on line 16 but not the one on line 15 so we'll see here we'll run it in Firefox and sure enough it stays green and not blue because the the embedded styles have a greater high level of precedence than the external style sheet but what if I come in here now and put like font size and we'll put small and save. Now in this external style sheet do the rules apply at all since I'm using embedded styles? Yes they do. But the the color is going to be negated because I have a color rule here for H1. But in my embedded styles I do not have a font size attribute defined here in my embedded styles nor do I have a font size attribute in either of these H1 tags. But in my embedded styles I do have a font size that's small and so this attribute here of font size small is going to pass its way down past the embedded style, past the inline style because I don't overwrite it anywhere on any of these other lower levels of precedence. So we go ahead and now run this, make sure everything is saved. I'm going to run, launch in Firefox, and there we'll see that they are both, these are both H1 tags, look at that. H1 tags for each of those. But now the color of the inline style stays, the color of the embedded style stays, but the font size of the external style sheet st stays because the external style sheet uh, is out there. It has a rule that was not overridden by the embedded style and it was not overridden by the inline style.